Good day and welcome to Building on the Rock. I am Pastor Chris Turner, the pastor of Rock Tabernacle Church, Milwaukee. And today we're going to start a new series of teachings from the Word of God that I'm certain is going to be a great blessing to you. I'm excited about it because I'm coming from Psalm chapter 112. Psalm 112, which happens to be my favorite psalm in the whole Bible. Psalm 112. And I just... I, I've always enjoyed reading this, studying it, meditating upon it, hearing teachings about it, but also doing teachings myself on this Psalm 112. And it's my favorite psalm. And uh, we don't know who the author is. We don't know if it's David or we don't know if it's another psalmist. And, but it's the psalm that talks about the blessed righteous man who trusts in the Lord. How blessed and happy a righteous man is, a righteous woman can be, who trusts in the Lord. That's what the theme of this psalm is. It's my favorite one. And I'm going to read that psalm, and then we're going to get in this teaching, and I'm so excited about this because this is going to be a help for you. I, I want you to bear with me for, for this week and maybe next week. We're going to lay a little foundation uh, before we get into it. We're going to lay a foundation of what we're going to talk about, and then we're going to get off into some good teaching, and it's going to be a blessing to you. So Psalm 112, and I'll begin reading in verse 1. I'll read the whole psalm, only 10 verses. Psalm 112 says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man, or happy is the man, that, that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light and darkness. He is gracious full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees desire upon his enemies. Verse nine says, he has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Now it's Psalm 112. That's the Psalm of the righteous man who trusts in the Lord. And I always said this to my church, and I say it to you right now, that I've determined in my life that this Psalm is going to be a picture of me. This psalm is going to be a, a description of my life, that all the blessings that are shown and talked about in this, in this psalm that the righteous man walks in, I've determined that it's going to be a picture of my life on this earth as long as I live, and, uh, and, and, and it'll, it'll glorify God, and, and that's how I'm going to live. I mean, I'm determined, and I've taken steps and done what it takes in many ways to, to see to it that this psalm is a picture of me. Because it talks about many blessings. In verse 2, it talks about how that his family is blessed. I have a family, and I believe the blessings of the Lord is for me and my family. Amen. Verse 2 talks about his finances are blessed. It says, wealth and riches are in his house. It's speaking about the righteous man who trusts in the Lord. His family is blessed, number one. Number two, wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. It talks about how that he receives direction from the Lord in verse 4. I mean, we all have situations in our lives where we could go uh, one way or the other way, and we're not certain, but we need the Lord to direct us. We want God to direct us in the right path, the right way to go, who to marry or who not to marry, where to live. I mean, what, what job to take or when, you know, when to go here, or when to go here, where to send your kids to school. All these questions we have in our lives. Well, the Bible says the righteous man, he, he receives direction from the Lord in these things, in these matters. Amen. Uh, verse 5 talks about that he guides his life and his affairs with wisdom. We need wisdom. Solomon said that wisdom is the principal thing. You need the wisdom of God operating in your life and, and discretion from the Lord operating in his life, in your life. But it's, it's the righteous man who's walking in these blessings. He has that wisdom, that discretion from the Lord. Uh, uh, he, verse 6 says that he leaves a legacy to re be remembered. He leaves a legacy of blessing to be remembered. He's always remembered, amen? And I, when I leave this earth, when I leave this earth, at an old, old age, satisfied of life, 
I want to leave a legacy to my children and my children's children of a righteous life lived for God, who was uh, a man who walked in the blessing of the Lord, a man who lived for God and was blessed by God. Amen. And, and this this righteous man in this psalm leaves that that testimony. Amen. Well, glory to God. We could go into more of that, but but that's just a few of the things it talks about. But the two verses that we're going to focus on in this whole teaching. Two verses that we're going to focus on from Psalm 112 in this whole teaching, verses 7 and verse 8. Listen to what it says here about the righteous man. I'll read verse 6 first, okay? Give me a chance. Verse 6 says, Surely he, the righteous man, shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid, verse 7 says. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established, verse 8 says. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemy. Verse 7 says, his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. And verse 7 says that his heart is established. Fixed and established. His heart is fixed, trusting in and established. And uh, that word fixed right there, it means settled firm, uh, uh, fast, stable, and secure. Is that a picture of your heart trusting in the Lord? Are you in trust today, walking in trust and faith before God with a firm heart, fixed and established, firmly uh, secure and stable? That's what fixed means, amen? That word established right there means set, firmly founded and rooted, kind of like the same thing almost means to be set. If your heart is established, it's set, it's firmly founded and rooted. That's the way we should be as believers. We shouldn't be sometimey up and down, back and forth, sometime up, sometimes down. You win some, lose some, and you know, sometimes you're strong in faith, other times you're, you're just weak. Oh, but the Bible says here that your heart in faith and in trusting God can be settled, firm, fast, stable, secure, Firmly founded and rooted, established and fixed, fixed and established, trusting in the Lord. And, and the way you know, and that's the reason why, but down here it says, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. That's the reason why he's not afraid here. It says he's not afraid. This is the righteous man who's trusting in God. He's not afraid of evil tidings because his heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He's not afraid until he sees desire upon his enemy. So apparently he has enemies. He has uh, things that have come up against him. Circumstances and situations and tests and trials and, and he has, and here up here he says bad news. That's what evil tidings mean. You get bad news. You ever get bad news? Well, just live long enough. You will get bad news at some point in time. But the, but the righteous man who's trusting the Lord, when he gets bad news, when he gets the evil tidings, when he has enemies that come out against him and he hasn't seen the situation turn around, he hasn't seen the victory manifest, in that time, the Bible says he's not afraid because his heart is fixed. He's, his heart is established. He's not afraid. Uh, uh, the bad news didn't shake him, didn't make him fall apart. The evil tidings didn't make him fall apart and crumble and give up. And, and also, while he's waiting to see God manifest an answer in this situation, the Bible says he's not afraid. Amen. And that's because his heart is fixed and his heart is established. Is that a picture of you? Is that a picture of you? When you get bad news, when you get evil tidings, like a bad doctor's report, or if something financially bad has happened to you, or something uh, in your family, a situation uh, has come against your family or, or something, do you just just fall apart and crumble and, and pull your hair out and get worried and, 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 you know, fret and worry and cry about it? Or is your heart fixed and established, trusting in the Lord, even though things may look bad, even though some bad things have happened and some bad news has come, you're still trusting God. You're trusting God to put you over and to give you victory because that's what he's promised. Amen? Is that a picture of you? If it's not a picture of you, it can be a picture of you. Amen? 
If your heart is not fixed and established in trust and trusting in the Lord and, and, and if evil reports and, and bad news and bad circumstances, you know, make you want to have a nervous breakdown or make you want to, oh, it, well, you know, you, you need to get established. You can get fixed and you can get established trusting in the Lord if you are a child of God. And you need to because you're living in a world that there's bad news coming. It's full of bad news. There's full of evil tidings. There's full of circumstances and situations that will come against the child of God. And the reason is because we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where there's full of the curse. The devil bought the curse when Adam sinned. It's full of the curse. It's full of uh, sickness, disease, poverty. It's full of demons and fear. It's out there in the world, man. And now we're supposed to live above it. We live in victory over it when we're in faith, but that it's in the world and it's gonna visit your life at some point in time or another. You can't live, it doesn't matter how sincere you are, how much you love God, how, how right you live, you're gonna have situations, temptations, tests, and trials. They come to all of us. Jesus said in the Bible, said many are the afflictions of the righteous, the Bible says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And Jesus said, this is what Jesus did say. Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulation. You are going to have tribulation. Jesus promised that. So therefore, you're going to, you can't escape that. He said, in the world, you're going to have tribulations. He said, but, but he said, but, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen. And when he's overcome the world already, given you the victory, and we trust in the Lord, and we trust in the Lord and live a life of faith, in a life of trusting in the Lord, the promises of God, then we also live a life of victory over any temptation, test, or trial. Amen? God will put you over it. God will give you the victory. Amen? And he expects to do that, and he wants to do that, and he's going to do that. Amen? But we're getting back to our, our scripture here. It talks about the bad news that comes to this man. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord, therefore he's not afraid of bad news. His heart is established and, and, uh, and trusting in the Lord. Therefore, uh, he's not afraid even while he's waiting to see. One translation says it this way. Even while he's waiting to see his desire upon his enemy. While you're waiting to see that financial situation turn around. While you're waiting to see your child come back out the streets and, 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 and get back right with God. While you're waiting to see that doctor's report or that, that sickness and disease that's attacked your body, you're waiting to see healing manifest in your body, you're still not going to live in fear and be afraid, man. Now, you know, a, a good test right there, a good example of this is, um, is what happened in the last year, year and a half or so, with this COVID vaccine. Uh, not COVID vaccine, but the COVID virus that, that has come where people have... Um, when this virus has visited the whole world and uh, many people were sick and many people have died, they, they say because of, of COVID disease. And, um, and uh, it's really shined a spotlight and it has revealed a lot about where the trust of people truly is. And I'm not talking about the world, but the unsaved per people of the world because they don't, they don't know God. They don't know the word of God. They don't know the promises of God. I mean, but I'm talking about the children of God, the people of God who were born again, who called, uh, uh, have called upon the name of the Lord, who were saved. It's really revealed where many people truly are in, in their faith and trust before God because the world was terrified and still is terrified about COVID. I mean, it just shook the world to its core. People were just terrified and afraid, amen? Sadly, many people who were born again were just as afraid as the world, just as terrified as the world, just as full of fear and worry and anxious and, and expecting something bad, expecting the worst and afraid for the worst. That, uh, they were just as bad as the, as the world was. And that, that wasn't good. That's not good. And if that's, not, if that's a picture of you, then, um, then uh, we need to make some changes, amen? Because the Bible says that evil tidings and bad reports. See, I, I think COVID, I think, would qualify as an evil tiding. Would you say? Would you agree? 
Is that, is that bad news? COVID uh, virus is attacked? Well, yeah, that's bad news. Well, the Bible here says that if your heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord, then then you won't be uh, you 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 won't be full of fear. Amen. And and while you're waiting to see uh, the, the end of this thing, your your heart is established, and you're believing God. Amen. Through it, without fear without fear. And there are people who are afraid of it. There are people who are afraid now of the vaccine. They're, or the, they have the vaccines out, supposedly they're supposed to take care of the, the, the virus. And I have my thoughts about vaccines and, and, and what they are, but there are some people who are afraid not to take the vaccine, that they've taken it because they're afraid that if I don't take it, I'm gonna die of COVID. But on the other hand, there are some people who are afraid to take the vaccine because they think that if they take the vaccine, they will die of the vaccine. And, you know, I, I, I've i heard, you know, on both sides, you, you both, we all have heard on both sides, you know. But, but listen, to both sides, that they're afraid, fear. Anything we do that's motivated by fear, we shouldn't do, child of God. We shouldn't be motivated by fear. If you're going to take the vaccine, you better not take it out of fear because you're afraid. If you're not going to take the vaccine, you shouldn't take it out of fear. I mean, fear is, 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 is that thing. Is that we, because when you're in fear, you're already, you've already opened the door to the devil. And there are people who are just terrified about it. And, and once again, I'm not, it's not for me to say you should take the vaccine. You should take it. I'm not going to say you shouldn't take it, or you should. It's not for me or any minister to say, but I, I'm going to show you some principles from the Word of God that, that says, number one, whatever you do, whether you do or don't, if you're motivated by fear in doing or not doing, you're already off base. You've already opened the door to the devil. He operates through that. The Bible says in the book of Job, the thing which you have greatly feared has come upon you. Job said, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. You know the literal Hebrew of that says it means this? It means the thing that I have greatly feared, Job said. You know, Job went through a, a severe, severe attack of the devil in his family, in his physical body, in his finances. Just, just brutal attack. And he said it was the thing that I greatly feared has, has taken feet and runs to me. That's what the Hebrew says, literal Hebrew says. The thing which I greatly feared is taking feet and it runs to me. And that's the same with you and that's the same with me. We don't want to, don't, don't live in fear of COVID. Don't live in fear of vaccines. Don't live in fear of not taking vaccines or taking vaccines. Don't do anything in fear because it opens the door to the devil and the man whose heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. The man whose heart is established, that's not that's, that's not, he's not moved by fear either way. Glory to God. Amen. So vaccine, whether you take the vaccine or don't take the vaccine, I will tell you one principle you should follow is the principle of trust. Trust. Amen. Trust. And so, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, yeah, well, I believe trust. I believe we need to trust the science, right? Trust the science. Well, there's a problem with that. I, can't find it in the Bible. I'm a minister of the gospel. And as I've lived by the word of God, I can't find anywhere. I've read the Bible numerous times. I can't find anywhere in the Bible where it says trust the science. But I will tell you what the Bible says here in Proverbs chapter 5. I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Hear that? Trust the science? No, that's not what it says here. Trust Dr. Fauci. What? No, no, wait. No, that's not what it says either. Trust the CDC. No, that's not what it says either. Here it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. If you take the vaccine, you need to have acknowledged the Lord, had a peace in your heart about it. You need to have heard from God and you take it and take it in faith. 
if you don't take a vaccine, you need to acknowledge the Lord, trust the Lord, and have not taken it, but be in faith. Either way, you need to be trusting, not in man, not in any man, not in any organization or in any government, any doctor. I mean, thank God for doctors, thank God for scientists, but I don't trust the scientists, I trust the Lord, amen? That's where my trust lies. Lord God, and, and you too, amen? All right, enough said about that. So whether you do or don't, just make sure you're in faith and make sure you're not letting fear be the motivating uh, factor for whatever you do or whatever you don't do. And bless God, I don't care if you're talking now about a second, third strand and a strand from India coming and this worst things can happen. That should not be your expectation, amen? You're the child of God. You're in faith. You're not afraid of those evil tidings because your heart is fixed, amen, trusting in the Lord. Your heart is already established, and you're not afraid until you see your desire upon your enemies. Glory to God. Amen. So, but, um, so this is what we're talking about, and this teaching that we're going to get into is entitled The Established Heart. The established heart. How does it look when your heart is established? How do you get your heart established in faith, trusting in the Lord? How do you fix your heart? See, because it's something you have to do. God won't do it. You know, here's the, you know, it says his heart is fixed. His heart is established. If your heart gets fixed and established and becomes firm and settled and secure and trust in the Lord, it's because you did it. It's not something that God will do for you. It's not something your pastor can do for you or someone can do for you. I can't lay hands on you and, and get your heart fixed. I can't, you know, pray a prayer over you and have your heart fixed and established. It's something that you have to do, something that you can do, and something that you must do. Amen? Trusting in the Lord. Get it fixed and get it established and get it firm. If it's not fixed... If it's not established, if it's not, if it's, if you're right now, you're full of fear about your life, about your finances, about your kids, about your health, about, about your job, about your relationships or whatever you're afraid of right now and your, your heart, then you do tell me your heart is not fixed and established, but you can get it there. You can make the change. You can do it. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take some effort on your part. But it's effort that you can do, and we can do, and we can get this thing done, and we can live that way. We can be a picture of the righteous man in Psalm 112. We can be a picture of him in every way. We can be a picture of him in every way. Our family can be blessed. Our finances blessed. We can be walking in wisdom. We can walk in the favor of God. We can walk in, in the blessings of God. And also, we can walk free from fear in this earth even in this time and this generation when the world is full of fearful people, full of fear and terror, we can walk and, and, and have the picture of, of, the, of the established heart and this, uh, this righteous man. And this teaching is entitled The Established Heart. And we're going to talk about some things that we need to get our heart established in. Amen? Amen? Established in faith. We're not going to use our faith like many people... Uh, use their faith as like a spare tire you know that's not what this man does you know the spare tire on your car uh, I did a teaching years ago about people who live with spare tire faith or spare tire trust that means you know you, you know you have a car and in the back of my car I have a spare tire underneath the back there and I get in my car every day I drive it every day of my life and I don't think about that spare tire in the back of my car. I don't care about it. I don't pay much attention. I don't pay any attention at all to it, really. I don't think about it. It doesn't cross my mind. I don't go check on it every day to make sure it's still there and make sure it's still inflated. And, and when, I just don't think that. I don't give a second thought about that spare tire. But when I get a flat tire, what's the first thing on my mind? Is that spare tire. Where's that spare tire? That spare tire now has become very, very important to me. Ain't that right? Why is that spare tire important? Because I got to get back on the road and I need that spare tire. And I didn't think about it before, but I'm sure thinking about it right now because I need to get back on the road. Well, there are a lot of people who, who use their trust and their faith in God as a spare tire. Spare tire trust. Spare tire believers. I mean, in other words, they don't think about the things of God. They aren't trusting in God. They aren't, they aren't 
think they don't give a second thought about God and, and they just go their life and live their life and do their life. He's there all the time. Amen. He's there. And you might be conscious and aware that he's there, but they don't spend time with him. They don't spend time in his word. They don't think about him at all. But when something goes wrong in life, then they want to run and say, oh, where's God? Where is God? Oh, let me find God. Let me read my Bible. Let me get in there. Let me get in there and, and, and find God. Well, no, you're using God like a spare tire. That's not the way the child of God is supposed to live. It's not the way we're supposed to live. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. He lives by faith all the time. He's established in faith. He's strong in faith. He lives. He builds his faith strong in the word of God before the bad news comes. Do you notice here at verse 8, we're back in 7 and 8, verses 7 and 8 of Psalm 112. His heart, he's not afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting the Lord. His heart is established. He should not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemy. Notice that his heart was already fixed and established before the bad news came. Bad news is not what drove him to the things of God or not what drove him into faith and believing God. He was already strong in faith. You can get your faith already fat and already strong and buffed and built up and ripped and cut. You can have six-pack faith, praise God, like me. And, and, and be before the devil attacks you or before a circumstance goes wrong in your life and Believe it or not, I'm not, I'm not speaking bad on you. If you're not in a situation right now that you need God's help, you will be. You will, you're going to have situations where you need divine intervention. Amen? But we want to make sure that our faith is already ready to go and strong and our hearts are fixed and established already before that happens. And that's what we're going to talk about in this teaching. We're going to show you how to get there. We're going to show you some areas in your life that... Some that, that, that you need to get it fixed and established in. Some things, there's some things that every believer needs to know. Every believer needs to be established in. We'll get, we're going to get into that. But, but let me show you one more verse here. We're back in Psalm 112. And I'm going to read verse 10. Look at verse 10. It says, okay, the, the verse 1 through 9 talks about the righteous man and, and how he lives, how blessed his life can be. But look at verse 10. It says, the wicked shall see it. The wicked shall see this righteous man and how blessed he is, how, uh, how, how, how prosperous he is and how blessed he is, how blessed his family is. The Bible says the wicked shall see it and shall be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Did you hear that? The wicked shall see it. So here, the first nine verses talks about, the first nine verses of Psalm 112 talks about the 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 righteous man and how he looks, the picture of the righteous man who's trusting in God. But the last verse is a picture of the wicked man and how he looks. And so God is drawing a comparison and he wants to contrast the wicked with the righteous. And that's what God wants to do in the earth today. He wants to draw a comparison and a contrast. He wants to draw a contrast between the wicked and the righteous. He wants your life to be to stand out and to be an example and to and to and to, to be opposite to, to show opposite of what the wicked people are. You're not supposed to live like the wicked, and it's not just talking about living in sin, but it's talking about suffering the suffering the things that the wicked man is suffering. God doesn't expect the child of God to suffer the same things. Yeah. Temptations, tests, and trials come to all of us, but when the wicked man goes under, the righteous man goes over. When the wicked man is defeated in it, the righteous man comes out of it victoriously. God expects that contrast. He expects your life to be different from the world, amen? He didn't just save you and, 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 and you're born again, you're saved, you love Jesus. He didn't just do these things and expect you to live on the same plane and the same level as the wicked man anymore. He expects your life to rise up and to come up and to be above that which is that uh, which he shows the, of the wicked. Amen? Glory. And, and is your life that way? Is your life that way? Can people look at your life and see the blessings of God in your life? They look at your family and they see the blessings of God in your family. 
They look at your finances and they see that you're all, your needs are always getting met. You, when you come under a financial situation, you always come out of it and come out of it on top and your needs are always met. When sickness and disease attack your body, you come out victoriously. You, you rise up and receive healing, amen? See, the wicked should see your life and see a difference in your life. And, and if they don't right now, they can and they will as we get into this teaching, get our hearts fixed, our hearts established in faith, and then let the blessings of God begin to manifest in our lives. Amen? So once again, we're going to talk about some things that we should be established in. We should be established, number one, in uh, uh, the reality of the new birth and what the new birth is all about. That's, you should be established in that. You should be fixed and established in knowing what it means to be born again. You should be established in, uh, in, in, uh, in righteousness, knowing that you've been made the righteousness of God. I'm just giving you a, a little glimpse of what we're going to talk about in the future, the last, next couple of weeks. Established in righteousness. Know that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and what that means. You should be established in the, in the, in the, uh, in the infilling, the imprint, indwelling presence of God, knowing that God doesn't live out in heaven somewhere. God doesn't live out in the universe somewhere. He lives inside of me. Amen. Greater is he that's in me. You should be established in that. You should be established in the fact that you have the authority of the believer. Amen. God has given you authority in the earth. And you should know that as well as you know anything and be established in that. You should be established in faith. Knowing the faith of God dwells in you and how to walk and live by faith. You should be established in the name of Jesus. That the name of Jesus is, is, the, is the name above all names, but it's been given to you. It is a weapon. You pray in the name of Jesus. You live in the name of Jesus. And, and, and uh, uh, Satan and every name will bow to the name of Jesus on your lips. Amen. You should be established in the power of the blood of Jesus. That's just a few of the things that we're going to talk about in the weeks to come. This teaching is going to be a tremendous blessing to you. I am Pastor Chris Turner. If you've never been saved, what you need to do is just need to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Ask Jesus to come in your heart and to save you. You can be born again. And then we can start this journey uh, on the Word of God and become established in some things. And let the blessings of God begin to show up in your life like God wants them to and like they can. And uh, we're going to get there in weeks to come. Once again, I'm Pastor Chris Turner. This is Building on the Rock. God bless you, Sean.